My name is uh, George Murphy, and I want to thank you guys for coming to hear me talk about uh, a couple of tools that can uh, handle uh, dealing with vulnerabilities in your code. Um, before I get started uh, with the presentation, I want to ask you guys uh, two things. Uh, how many of you are not actively using command bots? Yeah, that's a lot of folks. Okay, how many people are actively using command box? Okay, all right. Um, command box uh, sits at the core of uh, how these tools uh, work. Uh, you can use them, one of them, in an app, but it's much easier using command box. And I'm going to go through how to install any uh, Cold Fusion server on your local machine or stood up a server. It takes uh, a lot of time to do it. Well, if you're using Command Box and you've got a good internet connection, you can, you can be up and running in, in under two minutes. Um, so, anyway, let's get into the, uh, the meat of this and uh, we'll see where we go from here. Uh, just to tell you a little bit about myself, uh, I have a, a wife and a lovely daughter, and um, I've been working with uh, Cold Fusion since version 4.0. Uh, I love uh, the internet and the cloud, and I really, really, over the past two years, I've gotten really heavily involved in uh, writing uh, infrastructure as a service and using um, Terraform to do this, and Nomad, and um, I can basically deploy a server to AWS or Azure or DigitalOcean in under five minutes, and provision the server with all, all of needed software. It's a Windows uh, server, I would use uh, the Windows uh, Package Manager, Chocolati, and um, uh, that's a little bit about me. But becoming very, uh, I've become very proficient in being able to stand up these servers and uh, deploy applications uh, locally on my computer as well as in the cloud. And uh, with, with this deployment, there comes dangers and. Anytime you are deploying something, it behooves you to know uh, what the vulnerabilities are and how you're going to look to see what those vulnerabilities are and then do something to uh, mitigate some of those vulnerabilities. Um, so we're going to look at uh, uh, what you, how you protect your code. Uh, we're going to talk about several applications to find vulnerabilities in the code, and uh, we'll look at an open source tool which uh, Ortus uh, built uh, all, uh, about four or five years ago, and it was to migrate a bunch, over 300 applications uh, from uh, one provider to another, and very old legacy code and we needed a way to be able to look at the code to see what the vulnerabilities are and to be able to track those vulnerabilities, see when they were getting fixed, uh, see who they were assigned to to, to fix it. Uh, and that, that tool is called Code Checker and we're going to do a, a deep dive into that. Code Checker has uh, two flavors of usage. Uh, it has an app, uh, which is not my favorite way, and it also has a CLI inside a command, uh, which is a module inside of a command box, which allows you to just write simple commands. And you know, I know when I first started in Cold Fusion, I was a Windows person, and I was scared to death of the, uh, the 
terminal. Now I, I'm very, very comfortable with the terminal. Uh, I don't have to memorize a bunch of commands, just the core ones, uh, because most of these tools have help. And I'm going to show you how to access the help so you can easily write these commands. Um, we're also going to be looking at a commercial tool called Fixinator, which is a, an outstanding piece of uh, software which only runs uh, uh, as a CLI. Um, there are different flavors of this software, and there are three flavors. There's one which is a client uh, version, which is what will be on this machine. And it's also a version uh, for a server, which goes out to uh, AWS, it connects, reads your code, and it does it you know, using a Lambda function. So you don't have to worry about, oh God, I don't want somebody looking at my code. Well, if you got it on GitHub, it doesn't matter because that's public anyway. But if you have it on a private server, and you're concerned about that, uh, no need to worry because all that stuff gets uh, flushed out as soon as your request is over. Uh, and if you're deeply, deeply concerned about it, uh, Fixinator has an enterprise version of this software which uh, you can run on your own server. And I'm gonna show you guys uh, the client version, and uh, if time will uh, permit, uh, which I don't think it will, um, we can talk about some other tools as well. But the main focus is going to be on uh, Code Checker and Fixinator. And uh, if you're interested in learning more about this, I strongly suggest uh, Pete uh, Freitag's uh, security uh, training course. Uh, I attended that. Uh, uh, day before yesterday, and it was an outstanding uh, class, and I learned a lot in there because he updates it uh, every year. You can get a lot of good, valuable information. Was anybody in that class? Okay, good, good. Okay. Um, what is code check? Well, Code Checker is a tool that can run as a standalone Cobox module. It can also run as embedded as a Cobox module inside of the command box. Uh, I've left a link there for you guys, and my slides will be available um, uh, whenever Adobe decides to put them up. Uh, but we can we can look at. Uh, a deeper dive into code, uh, code checker at that URL. But first thing, first thing uh, I want to do is uh, is bring up. Um, uh, I won't go through the whole install process of Command Box, but I'll show you how easy it is. Um, let me escape out of here, and what I'm going to do. I've already got command box installed on this machine. And basically, all you do is you could download command box just by coming over here and just in Google type command box. Okay. You would download it, you click one of these links, depending on if you're on a Mac or Linux or, or uh, Red Hat Enterprise Linux, what have you. Now, if you don't have Java installed on your machine, then you want to download uh, one of these with the JRE encoder. And basically, all you do is um, download that binary, 
put it somewhere. I, I'll show you where I have it. If I run this command, which box, it's going to tell me where I have command box loaded. Now, I loaded a command box with Chocolata. You can do that. You can go to their website, and uh, I highly recommend it because it'll make your life much easier for managing your software. Um, and they have almost everything there. They have Java. They have uh, uh, different uh, versions of of different different things, and it's a package manager. So when your um, code needs an update, you can run a command from Chocolati, and it'll give it'll tell you which uh, which pieces of software are outdated. For Okay, so this is where um, this is where um, command box is. So I'm going to copy this, and I'm going to come over here, and I'm just going to do cd and paste, and then we're going to uh, let's see, look at that folder. Oh. Okay, as you can see, I have uh, quite a few things in that bin folder because I'm using uh, Chocolati to install these different pieces of software. But down here is, uh, is my box file. And basically, all you would do, you would have a zip file um, if you downloaded it not using Chocolati. You download it using Chocolati, it's going to create this the, the directory for you. It's going to put it on the path so you, you know, you're out of the business of uh, doing this physically. That's only for Windows users. Chocolati is not, uh, you, Mac users, you'd be using Homebrew. So you would come over here, you would double click this file. It would install uh, all the uh, things that you need, and where it puts it by default is over here. Let's see if we can get to that. Creates this little folder here called dot command box. What's inside of there? What's inside of there is uh, all of the things that we need to run Cold Fusion servers. And if we come over here, and these are all war files. We come over here, we can see I have one, one server installed. It's a Lucy server. It's a Lucy server. And inside of that server, I've got all of my context files. But in order to do this, uh, it takes literally two or three minutes to, to get this run. Okay, so now once I have this running, let me close this, and I'm going to come back over here, and I'm going to bring up uh, uh, Code Checker so we can see uh, that piece of code. I'm using uh, Git Bash here as my um, CLI tool. So, in order to start this, all I need to do is to switch into the box shell, which is that's the um, 
the uh, root level to run all command box commands. So I will say box, and what that's going to do, it's going to spin up a Lucy server for me. And once that's done, I will be able to start my application using that Lucy server. Because what happens is it stands up two servers. Lucy is the one that always uh, uh, orchestrates the other servers. So you can have eight, nine, ten, twelve, as many uh, uh, servers or applications that are attached to individual servers as your hardware can handle. All right, so command box is up and running. Uh, let's see something. Make sure I'm in the right place. Yes, I am. Okay, so I'm just going to run the command server start. And it's going to talk to that Lucy server that I showed you guys that was in um, in this server right here. It's going to start that server for me. Okay, so all I do is just type server start. And I've got that running. I need to stop that server first. Cancel. Too good. So I'm going to physically stop the server. What was happening? That server was running before, and I need to stop it in order to start start, start a new instance. So I'll type box again. Just spin up the uh, small Lucy server. Once I get both of the both of the servers up and running, I'll show you. Um, in the um, Java processes, those two servers run. Okay, so server list. This is going to tell me. Okay, so I want to stop this. So now I should be able, be able to start this again. Yeah, it's starting. Uh, now down in my system tray here, we're going to see a little icon pop up when the server is ready to run. And we'll also see... Um, Yep, it just came up. Now it's going to open it in the browser for me. And uh, we're going to be able to, to do some things. All right, here it is. In this tool, there, these are all the vulnerabilities there that it's checking. You can have it check for multiple things. You can have it check a single file, a single directory, and it'll it'll parse over uh, 
uh, recursively over over that directory until it's gone to the bottom root and it's, it's done everything. Um, but you want to be careful with that if it's a huge, huge directory. So let's see. I have some stuff pasted here. And it's just a file that I know that has a, a vulnerability to it. So, we found an issue with that file. Let's go look at the file so we can see. It says it's a query parameter issue. Well, there's the issue right there. And stuff like this is hanging around the latest code a lot. And this opens you to SQL injection attacks. So it's identified that for us. If we wanted to be able to, um, and I know I only did one, but if we wanted to be able to um, uh, grab that, now what I showed you there was it running in the CLI. But I could come over, and since I've already ran that, let's just run these over here and see what we get. <clears throat> I'll go up a directory here. So. Let's see. Let's try this. This way. All right, so we found a bunch of things. I can export this. XML file. That's okay. That's that's one reason I don't like the um, the app. It's much easier to come over here and clear this. Type code check. Tabs. If I put help or a question mark here, I can see more ways, more options that I have. Okay, so I have two options category or run. Let's back up a bit and type run. Now it's going through it's going through uh, all the folders where I am 
current. And it's creating a list of things with vulnerabilities. And when this is done, I'll go back to Code Run and I'll show you more options and how we can save to, a, to an Excel spreadsheet. But as I said before, it does take a little bit of time. Uh, and I'm on a, I'm RDP'd into my VPN back in Virginia. So. <coughs> It's going through, it's looking at all these files and it's running all the rules that you saw in the um, uh, on the group, on the app. So it's running all those rules against this directory and there's quite a few um, quite a few things in this directory. Done about another 20 30 seconds. The interesting thing about this tool this is totally free, uh, but it doesn't auto fix things. The next application that I'm getting ready to show you is a commercial tool, uh, which in free tag. Uh, wrote and manages and in that tool it has the option to auto fix your code and you can set it so that it just does it or you could say which i would never do i would get prompted every time it wants to fix something and i would say yes or no you know, because if i'm doing something inside of a SQL query with something that says date part and it's not going to allow me to put CF query param tags inside of that date part. Okay, it's almost done. Okay, found a lot of things. As you can see, Found 23 bar scoping issues. Um, now, if we came back here and we did question mark, here are different options that we have for filtering this. We could pass an argument with the, the different paths. Um, we could uh, do a common delimited list of only the categories we wanted to check for. We could set the severity level, uh, one being the highest, uh, five being the lowest, which is a little strange for me, but <coughs> that's the way they wrote it. Uh, Excel report path. You have uh, a way to uh, write the, an Excel file of the report. Um, and you can say whether you want all of this verbose or not. The default is false. So that is, uh, that is a code checker. Uh, next, what I want to uh, do is uh, come over here and talk a little bit about Fixinator and then I will go through that and show you how um, that particular uh, uh, tool runs. Fixinator allows you to auto-fix auto your vulnerabilities. Uh, it can detect uh, known uh, vulnerabilities for CFML, Java, JavaScript, vulnerability libraries. Uh, 
Uh, it can also integrate uh, into your continuous integration pipeline. So if this runs, when you commit code to your repository, and it's the same way as if you were doing testing for your uh, code. But this is testing for vulnerabilities. And the nice part about it is you can program it in such a way that if Stephanie commits her code, it can print out a PDF or Word or Zip. And if Stephanie's registered there, it'll, it'll send her that so she can fix it. Or come back and say, well, those are false positives. We need to add those to the ignore list. And once you add them to the ignore list, it won't report on those again. Um, what is it looking for? Things like SQL injection, remote code execution, unsecure file upload, backdoor vulnerabilities. Um, it has the same ability as CodeChecker does to have low uh, confidence results or very high severity, only high severity items. Ignored issues are ignored for, on, for all future scans. Uh, that's fixing the error. We have some, some really good resources to help you get much, much deeper into these tools. Uh, what I would like to do now is go back to the, um, the CLI, bring up Fixinator, we'll run through the, uh, we will run through the different commands so you can see those. Okay, let's see. So I'm in a, uh, a folder that I know is full of wrong All right, so let's look at uh, Flexinator and see what it, it does. Okay. Um, I'll show you how to install Flexinator. Fixinator? Hmm? Fixinator or Flexinator? Fixinator. 
That's your type of text. Okay. Thank you. There we go. All right, here we go. Uh, let's, let's see what's available for us. These are these are the argu arguments that uh, uh, Lucinator will uh, handle for us. It'll take a, a path or a file or a directory. It has a place for a result of a result file. Um, it has uh, the type of uh, result format you want. Be a JSON, HTML, PDF, or JUnit. Uh, whether it's verbose or not, and you can uh, uh, group by categories. It has a severity level, um, the confidence level, uh, none, low, medium, high, uh, ignore scanners, um, a list of scanner IDs to fix. It has auto fix, which I will show you guys that. It also has the ability to do um, a prompt automatic on the fixes uh, and the debug whether it's uh, true or false. All right, let's uh, let's get back over here to this other directory for that. Okay. I'm going to run it in this directory so I don't need to put path. Uh, the result file, let's see. This is <clears throat> and So it's starting to scan that directory now. And this one won't take as long as the other one. A lot faster. But this is a the way this is built is uh, is very interesting because it's taking Have permission to write the report file, but 
Oh, okay. All right. Well, I'll take that out. Thank you, please. Is this running on your system? It's running as whatever user you started by. Okay, no problem. I was the editing. I don't know what works. Let's do it again. So, anyway, this is. Uh, this is a tool that uh, that Pete put together, um, and he he knows this tool very very well, as you can see. Um, so what should I bump it up to, Pete? Uh, low. I know, I know this uh, has lots of vulnerabilities because this was the folder that I checked on before the presentation. And I must have had it set for load. Get as many as I did back. Sorry about that. So let me bump this up in size so we can see this a little bit better. So it's asking me, do I want to fix this SQL injection attack? And as I was telling you before, this is this is a false positive because if, if I wrap this in, see how query params is going to fail. What would be the big, best way to fix this one, Pete? Uh, yeah, it's a, um, it's a, uh, now this one is uh, something very similar. I'm going to say no. <clears throat> Step through on that same thing. out of this scan so I can show you the objects uh, working properly. And when you 
want to exit out of the box shell, it's just an exit exam, which I'm going to do now. Let's go to the folder. I know there's an issue, so I can show you that. Right here. Yeah. Get back to the box CLI. Because when I exited out, it shut down that Lucy server that was running with uh, the other app server or two servers running. So it's bringing that server, this. Uh, Controller server back up for the command box. Okay, it's back up. And let me see. Let me bring it up so we can see it a little bit better. Let's just fix it. Even though I know this is the default behavior for this has changed in higher versions of uh, of the CFML. But if you're like at nine yeah, or ten, this is still a vulnerability because what's happening is it's gonna add a a, a token to this. And this redirect line. So I'm just going to say <coughs> it was all I found. But if we come back over here to Five. Right, I think it was because you said yes, and you just need to say the option of fix, select number one. Oh, okay. That's good. Uh,
So it's fixing six items here. And that over here. So I have message. Yes, let's fix this because it added the token. Let's fix this one. I have not fixed this up here. I'm not quite sure why. Uh, it fixed this. And it also. Here's a login check. Uh, should have fixed this. I don't think the prompt is Yeah, it yeah, fixed this piece of code. It did not fix this. I'm not quite sure why. Anyway, you have to you have to tweak what you're looking for, and one of the things is, is uh, the way I like to do them is, is is go for certain categories uh, on these vulnerabilities and work it like that, and then fix them, and then go back and check. By running, uh, you know, an across the board uh, vulnerability check. Uh, back here. All right. So here's some resources where you can um, go and uh, download the code and check out the uh, the tool. Um, uh, here are some additional resources to allow you to be able to um, uh, find interesting things. Uh, you can, uh, a lot of these links are links to little GIFs that uh, show you uh, the tool in action and how it's uh, fixing different things. Um, I haven't had a chance to, to work with it for um, CI yet. But it's something I definitely uh, plan on doing. And um, uh, this is who I am, and there's my contact information. And if you need uh, uh, help with any of this stuff, uh, I would say contact myself or, or Pete if you're interested in uh, Fixinator. Or any of his other wonderful products. He also has uh, uh, a lot of uh, good products out there. He's got a tool called Fuse Guard, which basically is like a firewall for your servers. Um, he also has uh, uh, other tools, um, enterprise level tools, like I said. Uh, if you're at a government agency and you're interested in setting this up to to check your code, um, you can uh, get an enterprise license and have the the server on ground. And I know um, a lot of agencies don't allow their code outside, so um, that's a way to to deal with that. That is. Uh, 
It's about all I have. Thank you very much.